receive of his truth he shows us where we lack where we have fallen short and the way he does it Israel the reason he does it so that we may pick ourselves up we may pull up we may do the things that are Sadiq that are righteous in his sight Israel hallelujah one thing we must understand as a people as I continue this message concerning offend or to offend. It's easy for us to pick out those or them or that that offends us. But to sh find those things that offends others that we do, that we say, our actions, our proceedings day by day, we don't think we offend others. But we are keen to pin those that offend us, Israel. And it should not be. If we were Search our hearts and judge our hearts the way the Torah instructs us to do. Yes. Then there would be no need. We wouldn't have to offend one another. Hallelujah. We would not have to, as the term goes, step on one another's shoes. That's right. But in the same token, on the same tone, Israel, when we are reproved and corrected, yes. we should not be offended. Yes. We should not be offended. Yes. And then when we cross the lines, yeah. or we see those boundaries that Yahweh say, you do not come this far. When we sin, yeah. when we transgress the Torah, he gives us a pacific manner and a way for us to entreat, to bring an offering. Yeah. We, use, we say we apologize. And many times it's not, it's more the apology as I have said before. Yeah. There are those that do things that are egregious to their ish, to their it's y'all, their wife, the husband, their friend, their neighbor. And they think there's a simple thank you. It, it's, it's well enough. Well, that's not what the Torah yes. ascribes unto us, Yisra'ya. Oh. Even Miriam, when she uh, questioned even Moshe and Aharon, yes. she was stricken with leprosy. That, received, that, that showed the leprousness of her own lab, of her yes. own heart. An unclean ruach is spirit. Yes, yes. And even Moshe, he cried unto Yah. Yes. But even if uh, Avot has a, a daughter that even offends him, that shames him, and he spat upon her, it yes. said to go out of the camp for even seven days. So many times, it's not so much that we push ourselves on one, or on Almighty Yah, mm -hmm. when we offend his Torah, when we do things that are not acceptable in his presence. There's a process of time. And there are things we must do, Yisrael, that we may be received into the camp, into the house of Yisrael once again. And it's not a hard thing. She stayed without the camp seven days. The leprosy proceeded. They gave her time to think about what she'd done, her actions. There are those that knew that she were not in the camp, the shame of that, the thought of that. Why? That she may stay in the way, Yisrael. So what must we do as a people? Yes. So must we do as a nation? Yes. When we offend Yah? Yes, I have. When we miss the mark? When we transgress uh, Almighty Yahweh Israel? Yeah. There must be and it has to be a process of cleansing. Yes. That we must encounter, that we must do. Yes. Hallelujah. Before I get to my message, there are a few scriptures I want to express. Even concerning even the forgiveness yes. of the offering. It says here in Proverbs chapter 29, verse 1, talks about one being often reproved. Yes. Who are, uh, uh, who are, are a hope, Israel? Yeah. You know, the Torah even speaks as one as being a heretic. Mm -hmm. One that curses even the order and even the way the Torah, yeah. whether it be the Torah of Yah, the Torah of nations, or even of a town, yeah. or even of one household. And, and they do not give it any regard. Yeah. That's what a heretic is, Yisrael. 
We do not count amongst the Israel, the house of Israel, heretic as being a or a ho. It should not be Israel. But yet that spirit still rests in the hearts of men, and it should not be Israel. Let me read this before I get into this message. It says here, he that being often reproved, you're corrected, you're instructed, many times before time. In the Bible, Israel, you're instructed, you're corrected. But yet it doesn't cause you to shub or change your way. The Torah says that one that is often reproved, he hardeneth his neck. He stiffened his neck. Yeah. He doesn't turn. He doesn't shoot. He doesn't say what I have done has brought a great shame on my house, on the house of Yah and the congregation of Yah. Doesn't realize that. Time after time, the same thing over and over. What happened is that the heart of that one becomes hardened. And also says, shall suddenly be destroyed. Destroyed, Israel. Brought to an end. There's no remembrance of that thing or that one. I don't want to be destroyed. Because of my constant sinning and reproach against the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. To be wiped out, cleansed, purged from the bayah of Almighty Yahweh. And it said, and that will happen without remedy. That's what he says. Without any remedy. One that is sick, dying of a disease or a type of cancer. Without remedy, there's no means to cure or even to comfort one in their pains. Yes, come on, my friend. That's what it is, Yisrael. So let us not be a people that are hard-necked and hard-hearted against the reproof of Yah. Because it's to bring us back into the fold. It's to restore that we may see where we have fallen short, Israel, in the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Something else I do want to read. Hallelujah. It says in Titus, chapter 3, and I almost have to, just a few verses here that I want to get to the point, but I want to just begin in the, in the first verse and may skip a few here. It says, Put them in mind to be subject to the principalities and powers to obey the majesty. That's those that have been set and governed, a governance of people. There's some that may be over 20, 10, a multitude. Yes, sure. To be ready to every tough work, to speak evil of no man, That's to be no brawlers but gentle. Showing all meekness unto all men. That's one area we lack at Yisrael. Yeah. It's condescending. Realizing that we are but nothing but flesh and dirt, Yisrael. But we try to stress our focus, our point. We think that the words that we have to say are more important than what the Zakain have to say. What our elders have to say. When the truth goes forth, Yisrael. Let me go to the eighth verse, same chapter. He said, this is a faithful saying, and these things I will confirm constantly, that they which I believe in Almighty Yahweh may be careful to maintain tough works. We're not careful, Yisrael. We're not careful to maintain tough works. And the assembly in the house of Almighty Yahweh, amongst the Kedushim, we're not careful. It said, these things are tough and profitable unto man, but avoid foolish questioning and genealogies and contentions and strivings about the Torah, for they are unprofitable and vain. Yeah. It says that a man that is a heretic, he is one that does not have any kind of reserve. He is loud. He is boisterous when it comes to the Torah or any type of law that has been laid down. And he has no fear concerning such things. He breaks them. 
He constantly tramples them under his feet. A man that is a heretic after the first and second admonition, the Torah says you reject such a one. There's also a verse of the Torah that says they should be as, as a wicked man unto you that you shine him. You put him aside, Yisrael. Yeah. There's no honor. There's no reserve. You put that one out. You rebuke that one. You reprove that one. And you set that one out of the assembly. Yeah, that's, a that's what we should do, Yisrael. Yeah. Those that are heretics, that have gone out from among us, they have left us yeah. both physically and in the Ruah because they never were of the house of Almighty Yahweh. They never were a true ah. Uh, they never were a true ahot, uh, Yisrael. Yeah. So we should not find ourselves in these positions where we resist the authority of Almighty Yah. Whether it is set on an ahot, on a zakain, whomever it may be, we must have what the world always uses as respect. There must be honor, Yisrael. Yeah. And we know that they're not honor among thieves. Those that try to get over Torah by any other means but through Yahshua HaMashiach. So should there be heretics or heresies amongst the children of Israel? You must purify your life. You must purify your mind. You must purify your heart. And if you, have, if you are one that have gone that direction, it's not just a quick thing that that thing has been dealt with and it's over and everything's all lackadaisy. No, there must be a repentance. There must be a softness of heart. There must be one that is contrite, that is broken. That after a time and time, after you understand what you have done, you may be received into the Bay at Yisrael yeah. once again. You know, they would do that in the old days. One or a daughter or a son that has shamed his avat, his avat would pull him out, have nothing to do with him. Sometimes maybe a couple of days, a couple of weeks, maybe even a few years. But you let that son come back with the right ruah. The father's thought about him, miss him, even knowing what he'd done. And when they see one another, there's an embracing. And there's a forgiveness there. And there's a true repentance there. The son has brought forth an offering that is, that is acceptable. And then the thing is forgotten. And they move on from there. Sometimes spark up a beginning of another relationship, Yisrael. So must it be in the body of Yisrael. We offend one another. We bring offenses to the house. And we think we just write them off as being nothing. Well, you do that, you'll find yourself... And that same thing over and over again. It would be a stumbling block unto you, Yisrael. So let's do what Torah commands us. Let us search our hearts earnestly, day by day, every second, that we will see where we stand with Yahshua HaMashiach, and that we will obey the Torah. Hallelujah. You don't want to be stiff at Yisrael. You don't want to be a heretic. Because then, Yah, he will reject you. Hallelujah. Let me begin here. Offend, the importance of an offering. In James chapter 5, verse 13. Hallelujah. Y'all are cold. You know, we call for everyone, those that have the same spirit that we have, that are not of Yah, we're in a rebellious state. We find others that are rebellious. We find those that talk just like we talk. We speak against the art, we speak against the the Zakain, we find those with the same very spirits and we find ourselves gravitating to them. Instead of calling for the elders of the Bayat Yisraya, those that will tell you the truth and will reprove you and instruct you. It says in James, Yaakov, chapter 5, verse 13. Is any among you afflicted? Do you re recall as I be even begin this message, those that were sick of the palsy or was afflicted? The man that was led down through the rooftop, they may receive healing of his infliction. Yes, yes, yes. It says to let him pray. If any merry, let him sing to Helium Psalms. Mm -hmm. Verse 14. If any sick among you, let him call for the Zakain, the elders yes. of the assembly. And let them pray over him, yes. anointing him with the oil. In the name of Almighty Yahweh. You know, we are sick, and there are those of us that are sick. But we don't want to confess that we're sick. We want to say everything's all right. We don't want to say that we are weak. 
And we're not where we should be in Yahshua Messiah. We think we have everything, our ducks in order. The Torah, the rebuke is not for me, I'm above that. But we don't realize that we're sick. We're sick people. But we don't call for the Zarkane. We don't call for the elders of the assembly as we should, Yisrael, in the name of Almighty Yah. And it says in verse 15, if we would do this, and the prayer of Imuna shall deliver the weary or the weak. And Yahweh shall raise them up. And if he have committed sin, transgressions before Almighty Yahweh, they, be, they should be forgiven of him. That is the first order of business, Israel. It is the sin. It is the transgression. Even as Cain, he transgressed before Almighty Yah in slaying his brother. Yet there was not any repentance. There was no sorrow. He didn't, he didn't say, Yah, I am a sinful man. He did not say that. So he showed of his very heart and his nature the enmity or the, the wall that has been set up between his heart and his mind right. from Almighty Yahweh. One as being estranged from Almighty Yah. It goes on to say in verse 17, and it says that Eliah was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed earnestly. This is showing the ferventness of the power of prayer of Pilah, of those that are Sadiq. That it might not rain, and it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. It did not rain. The waters held up. Yah heard the prayer. He honored it. And it did not rain, Yisrael Yah. And he prayed again, and the Shemayims gave rain. And the earth brought forth her fruit. Don't you see what a prayer of earnesty, of sincerity? One that walks according to the Torah, the commandments of Almighty Yahweh. Immediately these things happen. They take a couple of days, but as soon as he prayed, Yisrael Yah. If we will walk according to the Torah as it is commanded of Yisrael Yah, when we send a pull out, when we pray for one another, to strengthen one another, it will happen immediately. The strength of Yah will overcome that one. But we must be earnest. We must seek the Zakane. Yes. We must seek out those yes. that are sincere. Yes. Verse 19. Oh, and let us not forget that. It says, and the earth brought forth her fruit after the rain. When there's no rain in your lab and in your heart, Yisrael, Yah, there will be no fruit of the Ruach that is brought forth. Right. Your mind, your heart will be as a desert, a waste place where nothing can grow. The seeds of the Torah cannot be sown. Yes. Your heart is stony, your neck is stiff. Yes. Yes. And the word that you hear from this roster, from this place, it, it goes and it withers. Yes. It goes away. There's no fruit even being brought forth. But if you would seek out those, the Zakane and Elder, instead of finding those that are of the same light mind that you are of, yes. and your wickedness and your sins, Yisrael, Yah. It says that he prayed and the rain came forth and the earth brought forth its fruit. Then only when we bring forth the fruits that are acceptable mm -hmm. in the presence of Almighty Yah, Yisrael Yah. There's no other way. We go every other way and seek every avenue beside what Yahweh has instructed us to do. We don't seek the Zakane. We don't seek the prayer of those that have remained in the Torah and that walk According to the Torah, Yisrael, Yah. That is the only way we shall produce the fruits of life and the fruits that Yah are looking for in our lives, Yisrael, Yah. And it says here in verse 19, Brethren, if any of you do error from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converts one that transgressed the Torah from the error of his way, he shall deliver his nephesh from Eo, or from, from death, and shall hide a multitude of transgressions. Have not Yahshua HaMashiach done that, Yisrael Yah? Has not he hid a multitude of our transgressions? Hallelujah. We come to Yahshua HaMashiach, and he purges and he cleanses us, that we may bring forth the fruits that are acceptable for Almighty Yahweh. I told you Yah for that, Yisrael Yah. 
told to Yahweh for that. Moving on. Lucas chapter 18, verse 9. Again, you recall me talking about the publican. There's nothing wrong with one having the ruach of a publican. And I mean one that sees or have, he understands that he is not walking in the way. He is one that has been despised, he has been rejected. He's not one that is pompous with pride, but he sees the lacking in his own left. It says, and Yahshua, he spoke a parable to certain which trusted in themselves that they were Sadiq and they despised others. Do we find ourselves doing that, Israel? Yes. We find our righteousness exceeding the righteousness of even the Torah and of others. Do we say, I, I sailed upon a pinnacle that no one can say anything to us and we despise others. It says, two men went up to the great Bayat Mitzpah of Almighty Yah to pray. One, he was a Pharisee. He wore his palastry upon his shoulders. He wanted everyone to know about his righteousness. He, he had the air of righteousness. He had the clothing or the cloak that he seen righteous or higher than any other man. And the other, he was a publican. He was a tax collector. He gathered taxes. He was rejected. He was despised. He was hated among the people. And the Pharisee, he stood and prayed, thus with himself, Yahweh, I thank you that I am not as the other men are. Have we found ourselves saying that? Oh, I'm glad I'm not like that. Uh, I'm not as bad as that a uh, hoax. Even to the center man on the street, we look at them, we say, man, he, what he's doing is just so bad, but yet what we do yes. in the congregation, and the congregation of the Sadiq, yes. we don't yes. think it's worse yes. than the man that do, does not know Yah. Yeah. He said, I'm not like that other man, and I thank you. He says that I'm not as other men are. Extortioners, I don't take, I don't steal. Unjust, I do not require more than what is lended out. I'm not like idolatrous or even, and I can see him turn around and looking at this publican. I'm not like him. I'm better than even this publican. He said, I fast twice in the week. I give the tithes of all that I possess. And it says in verse 13, and the publican, standing afar off, he stood afar off, yes, he did. away. Uh, yes. He would not lift up so much as his eyes towards the Shemayim, but he did this. But he smote his breast. Hallelujah. When the last time we have smote our breast, Israel? Yeah. We spend our days, we spend so many times. Buffering ourselves. Saying I'm better than this one. I'm better than that one. I'm above the Torah of Yah. That reproof, that reproof, it wasn't, it's not for me. I don't do that. I haven't done that much. I'm not that bad. But we are Yisrael Yah. We must be as this publican. Realize how wretched we are. How undone we are. He realized that. And in that, he was able to even find the hasid, the mercies of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. He smote his breast saying, Almighty Yahweh. Yahweh, he didn't hear the prayer of that man that said, I'm more righteous. That Pharisee, he didn't hear his prayer. But he heard the prayer of this publican. He said, Yahweh, be merciful. I need your hasid. For I am one that continuously transgress the mishpah of the Torah of Almighty Yah. He said, I am a sinner. I have gone out of the way. I have walked out of the light, the straight path of Almighty Yah. And it says in verse 14, I tell you that this man went down unto his house 
justified rather than the other. Don't you want to be covered? Don't you want your sins to be put aside, Yisrael? To be just in the presence of Messiah Yahshua. He was justified. And it says, for everyone that exalts himself, he shall be a base. And I have been a base. I have exalted myself. I have been brought low by the Torah. I have been brought low that I may see how wretched that I am. Hallelujah. He that exalts himself shall be a base. But he that humbles himself, he shall be exalted. Hallelujah. So let's stop lifting ourselves up in the pride of our own mind, the pride of our own way, justifying ourselves, Israel. Because if Yahshua HaMashiach, if he doesn't justify you, then you're not justified. You're condemned. You have not been cleansed for your sins, Israel. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Moving on to Tehillim, chapter 32, verse 1. I want my sins, my transgressions to be ever before me, yeah. Israel. I don't want them behind me in judgment. Yeah. Yeah. That way, if I see them and they're in front of me, then I can deal with them. Yes, I can. The Torah, his mitzvah should be always ahead of us, Israel. Yeah. That we know how to deal with the flawlessness of our own way yeah. and our own soulfulness, Israel. Yeah. It says in Tehillim Psalms chapter 32, verse 1. That we, he says, he prays, he speaks, blessed is he whose transgression is forgiven, yeah. is pardoned, has been cleansed. It's not seen. Yeah. His sins, they do not come up behind him. He said, but rock is he. He said, also whose sins is covered. His hata, his sins are covered, Israel. Yeah. I want my hata, my sins to be covered by yeah. the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yeah. I don't want them to be seen. Yeah. I don't want them to be forever behind me, the guilt yeah. of that. Hallelujah. That's why Yahshua HaMashiach, he come for those that transgress, have transgressed yeah. the Torah. Yeah. A chosen people. A people that are not worthy of even the mercies of the high seat of Almighty Yahweh. But yet, Yahweh said, you are worthy. Why? Because I have picked you out. Yeah. I have pulled you out of the cesspool, out of the miry clay, out of the pit of sin. I have pulled you out. I picked you out and I have cleansed you. He said, but right are those transgress, those whose transgression has been forgiven and whose hata, his sins, has been covered. Blessed is the man, the Adam, who Yahweh inputs not yes. iniquity. Yes. He doesn't hold that against him. Yes. The offering is sufficient. Yes. His hasid is sufficient. Yes. And whose root ark there is no guile. No guile. We don't find ourselves fighting or having words. We always have to have the last word. We always have, have to have the upper hand in every situation. We put ourselves high and above the Torah, the word of Almighty Yah. He said, in whose root uh, there is no guile. In verse 3, he said, when I kept silent, my bones waxed old. Through my roaring, my pleading, my crying all the day long. For day and night, your hands... Your judgment, Almighty Yahweh, they were heavy upon me. He said that even the moistness is turned into drought of the summer. See, like, he said, I've cried, I have pleaded, I've shed tears, so I cannot shed tears anymore. He said, Almighty Yahweh, in verse 5, I acknowledge my sin unto you. And my iniquity, he says, I have not hid. And I'm not talking about hiding. Uh, one that transgressed the Torah of Yahweh, always running, always hiding. Adam and Eve, they hid from the presence, the Ruach of Almighty Yahweh. They hid themselves, did they not? Is that not what one that runs continuously from the law? 
They say he is at large. What is the word I'm looking for? Jean Valjean, even in that story, he ran continuously from the yard. A fugitive, always running from the Torah, always running from the judgment of Almighty Yahweh. But that we say, I confess. I have no place to hide but in you, Almighty Yahweh. I have no need to run. If I run anywhere, it's to the mercy seat. It's to your feet. It's to the feet of Yahshua HaMashiach. It's to your Torah. We have no else to run, Yisrael. Yeah? Hallelujah. But we're fugitives. We're vagabonds. We have no place to go. We cannot stay in one place and be still to hear what the Ruach HaKodesh has to say. Even a message like this, it's hard for us to be, be still, to hear the simplicity of what Torah has to speak, Yisrael. Yeah? We're constantly running. Our minds are running. Our thoughts, they run, Yisrael. Yeah? Well, all we have to do is be still. And in that, will we even see the Yasha, the salvation of Almighty Yah. So he says that my eyes are the moisture of my crying and be turned turn into the drought of summer salah. He said, I acknowledge, I confess my sins unto you, Almighty Yahweh, and my iniquity, my transgressions, have I not hid. I said, I will confess my transgressions to you, Almighty Yahweh. How many times do we confess? How many times do we come before the mercy seat, the throne of Almighty Yahweh, with our offering, our sin offering, before him, and admit and acknowledge that we have sinned? Do we have transgressed the Torah? He said, I will, I will confess my transgressions unto Almighty Yahweh. And he says, and you, Almighty Yahweh, that forgive iniquity of my sins. He said, I will confess them unto you, Yah. Because it is you that forgive me. It is, it is you that I find high seat or I find mercy. It is you that I put my trust in. It is you that I put my confidence in. I want to move on to Ecclesiastes. And even as I was studying, as I was pondering, this stopped me in my tracks even in, the, in verse 26. I even read it to my Isha a few times. It said, do you understand even... Many times we don't even understand the gravity of what Torah speaks unto us, Yisrael. It says in Koyiti, Ecclesiastes chapter 7, verse 23. He says this, Yisrael. All this I have tested by wisdom, and I said, I will be wise. But it was far from me. Do we test all things by the wisdom, by the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, Yisrael? Yeah. But many times we, we think we're operating in the spirit of wisdom, and we, we're really not. We really don't have the understanding that we should have. Verse 24, he says, That which is, is afar off and exceedingly deep, who can understand it or who can find it out? We try to figure things out that are too deep, that are too wide for us, Yisrael. Yeah. But he says this in verse 25. But I turn, I shoot my heart to understand, to know about, and to search, and to seek out wisdom and the reasoning of things. And he said, I found this. And to know the wickedness of folly. Yes, yes. Even the foolishness of madness. Do we seek to understand those things, Israel? Yeah? The foolishness, the folly, the madness. We do not walk after the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. Our own, our own hearts, our own minds, Israel. Yeah? But he says in verse 26, which stopped me. He said that I found more bitter than death. He said in all of my searching, my understanding, Reading of the Torah, pondering the mishvah of Almighty Yahweh, considering my own ways, considering the ways of others. He said, I found more bitter than death the woman whose heart is, is snares and nets. Yes, yes. More bitter than death? What could be more bitter than the su'ul or to be separated from the presence of Yah? He said, a woman whose heart is to snare. One that lies, one that entraps, 
one that tries to confuse. We've done that as a nation, Yisrael. We have not been honest in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. We find ourselves lying, being dishonest, not being straightforward. He said it's more bitter than death. Such a one. He said, I found more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets and her hands. What should our hands be doing, Yisrael? Your whole, what should your hands be busy at doing? Tending to your house? Tending to the affairs of the assembly? Your ish? Your hands should be busy. But we find our hands to be, to be in, any, uh, in every other place but where they should be. Running from house to house, talking about things which we should not talk about. But he said that her hands is as bands. They restrict. They do not allow the Torah, or allow one to walk according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. That's more bitter than death, Israel. A woman that causes an ish or that is a hindrance to an ish or to the assembly. To move forward in the things of Almighty Yahweh. He said, in all my searching and my understanding, I found this, Yisrael. I don't believe we understand what he is saying right here. That is even more bitter than death. To be separated from Almighty Yahweh. But he says this. Whoso pleases Almighty Yahweh. Do we, how we please Almighty Yah? Do we please Almighty Yah, Yisrael? He said, Who, he that pleases Almighty Yahweh, this one shall escape from her. That's the only way we're going to escape from this mindset, Israel, this spirit, this woman, being set in our own ways. That we try to deceive Yah in every way. We cannot deceive Yah. You deceive your own self. Hallelujah. He said, that's more bitter than death. But one that pleases Almighty Yahweh, that walks according to his Torah, escapes from her. But it says that the hata, the sinner, Shall be captured by her. Shall be captured by her, Yisrael. Many times we're captured by this very same spirit. Why? Because we do not come before the mercy seat, the throne of Almighty Yahweh, with all honesty, with broken of love. We find ourselves rising up because we build up so much wickedness and folly in our minds and in our hearts that we lash out against the Torah of Yah. We lash out against those that reprove and that rebuke us, Yisrael. And because our minds and our hearts are not set, have not shewed, have not turned yes, yes. to walk straight and to walk according to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, we push it all to the side as being a small thing. And we move on and we go on, Israel. Yah. Not bringing the offering of that which Yahweh desires us to bring as being one that is hata, or as a sinner that transgressed the Torah. Moving on, he said, Behold, I have found even, saith the preacher, one that instructs by the Torah, counting one by one to find consolation, a conclusion, which yet my soul seeks, he says, that I'm not able to find out. One son of Adam among a thousand I have found. He said, I've looked, I have searched. For the man, one that stands on the Torah of Yahweh that is not moved, whose feet is sure. But he said, I have only found a one. And he said, a woman among all those have I found not. That's what he said. Why? Because of this very same spirit. This very same spirit, Yisrael. So we must search our hearts and our minds and our lives to see where we stand. Are we, above all, honest? Are we walking according to the Torah? Not lifting ourselves above the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, but seeing that before him we are nothing without him, Yisrael. We're nothing without Yahshua. We're nothing without his Torah. We're nothing without this straight and narrow way that he has set us upon to walk, Yisrael. We are nothing. Verse 29, he said, Lo, this only have I found, that Yahweh has made the son of Adam upright. It is Yahweh that causes Adam to walk upright. Even the physical man. We have heard this before, that when one walks, it's a falling motion. It's a balancing, a balancing 
feet, Yisrael. Without the tools that Yahweh has given us in our ears or our bodies, Yisrael, we could not walk upright. We couldn't walk straight. We will fall. We will crawl as beasts. So it is Yahweh that causes Adam, that causes us to walk upright. It is because of Yahweh. It's no, no kind of evolution. They teach man crawling and all of a sudden he's walking. No, it is Yahweh that gives you the ability to walk. And it is Yahweh that gives us the wherewithal to walk and to stand up in his Torah to defend it, Yisrael. We must defend it with our love, with our life, and with our heart. We cannot allow the world to run roughshod over us. We must be one, as he said, that stands solid and firm. Only one man, that man, Yahshua HaMashiach. Hallelujah. Our sure foundation. If we move in the same uh, book, chapter 8, verse 9, I want to read 9 to 11. 9 to 12. Hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. You know, I'm nothing, Israel. We shouldn't find ourselves lifting ourselves up. You know, it would be wrong for me to lash out in my youth and my strength against the Zakane here. Zakane Mahalia. Out of my own mind and my own useful way. Not walking according to the Torah. It's just wrong. It is these men. I have had Ema, father's mother, to bring me up. But there, there are those that are here that have continued my learning. Yeah. That I may walk circumspect according to the Torah of Yah. So it would be wrong for me to rise up in my youth against my Zakim. Yeah. When he's instruct me in righteousness. Yes. It's wrong to rise up against my Ak. When they say, Zakim, you know, that's not right. The Torah specifically says this. Yeah. And because I'm so full of myself, I don't want to hear it. I can't hear what they're saying. Because my mind is so full of myself. We're nothing. I am nothing. Hallelujah. Without Yahshua HaMashiach. So it is these men I have observed in my growing. They have stood strong. The hope also. The children, don't the children watch us? Our Abner, he watches me very closely. We do things together. We do things together. And I spend time. When he's with me, but he watches me very close. So should I even watch my own actions? Yes, I should. So should we watch our actions towards one another, Israel? Because there may be those that aren't as strong as you that are watching you. They may look up to you, whether you realize it or not. And if you go astray out of the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, and I would even get to that the example of that. Yeah. If we walk astray according to the Torah, that's going to cause those that are weaker than us to even go astray much more, Yisrael. Yeah. That's why it's so important that we guard our lives, that we be quick to hear and slow to respond or to speak. Yeah. It says in Ecclesiastes, Kohiti, chapter 8, verse 9. He says that all this I have seen and I have applied it to my left to every work that is done under the sun. There is a time which a son of man, a son of Adam, rules over another son, Adam, to do evil unto him. And I saw that the wicked, verse, in verse 10, he says, and so I saw the wicked. And they that came and went from the Kodesh place, they were forgotten in the city. And they were ahead so done. This is also vanity. He said, I've watched the wicked. I've seen them go in and out, even from the Kodesh places. And those places were forgotten, Yisrael. The things that Almighty Yahweh, he allows us to hear, to experience, we shouldn't so easily, this shouldn't so easily be forgotten, Yisrael. It shouldn't be as vanity, but they are. They're as vanity, they mean nothing unto us, Yisrael. He said, because sentence against an evil work is not executed expediently. We think because we continually get by, we reprove, we think we get by. We lay low for a while, we think it's all right. Therefore, the heart of the son of Adam 
is fully set even to do evil. Our hearts are fully set to do evil. Not set to do sadiq, those things which are right, but they're set to do evil, Yisrael. He says, though a sinner do evil, the hata, 100 times, and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear Almighty Yahweh. It seems that the wicked, they get away with wickedness. It seems like they never get caught. They get wealthy. They get dirty, rich, and it seems like they never get caught. That's the truth. But those that walk according to the, sta the statutes and the Torah and uphold to the testimony of Yahshua HaMashiach, don't you know that our reward is much greater than that, Yisrael? Yeah. He says, So shall it be well with them that fear Almighty Yahweh, who walk in fear before him. Yeah. It says in chapter 9, verse 18, Wisdom, it is a better weapon of war. But one sinner, one person, one hata, one that walks contrary to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, it says only it takes one to destroy much to just one is right, yeah. We could walk to the to according to the Torah, but just one account, it destroys much to us. So let us be diligent to search and to watch ourselves that we do not transgress the Torah, that we do not trample even the very dumb of Yahshua HaMashiach under our feet. Hallelujah. I don't want to do that, Israel. Yeah. He is my all in all. Yes. No one else I depend on. Yes. There's no one else that gives me strength to arise in the morning. No one else gives me the imuna to go day to day. There's no one else that has the Torah, the words of life. They give me the strength to press on, Yisrael. No one else. Going back to Tehillim, chapter 32, verse 6. That way he understood this to the utmost. Many examples as he was running from his enemies, those that saw his life, as he watched his and understood his faults as even leading the kingdom, the Melkut. There are many a prayer of Dawi. To Helium chapter 32, verse 6. And he knew that Confession was paramount before even moving forward in any way into the presence of Almighty Yah. Yeah. It says in Tehillim 32 and 6, For this shall everyone that is Sadiq pray to you in a time where you may be found, Almighty Yahweh. Surely in the floods of great waters, they shall not come high unto him. It shall not overflow us. It shall not consume us, Yisrael. He said, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs of deliverance. Are we compassed with songs of deliverance, Yisrael? Do you allow the Torah to continuously flow in our mind and in our hearts, that the praises and the thankfulness just given told out unto Yah will come out of our mouths freely. Hallelujah. He said, you are my hiding place. You shall preserve me from trouble. You shall compass me about with songs yes. of deliverance. He says, I shall make you prudent and direct in the way which you shall go. I shall counsel you with my eye upon you. Yes. I want the eye of Yah to continuously be upon me, Yisrael. Yes. To counsel me. To show me. To lead me. To guide me. He says, but, he said, be you not as the horse or as the mule, which have 
nor understanding. Which whose mouth must be held in with a bit and a bridle. He said it shouldn't be that way, Israel. No. We should not be held or headlocked that we do what's right and what Yah instructs us to do. He said, else it will not come near unto you. His understanding, his Torah. We must open our minds and our lives, Israel. That we may understand what Yahweh is saying. He said in verse 10, many sorrows shall be to the wicked. But he that trusts in Almighty Yahweh, steadfast loving kindness shall compass him about. I know that I need that, Yisrael Yah. His steadfast loving kindness. He said in verse 11, rejoice, be glad in Yahweh, and rejoice. You righteous, you Sadiq, you that walk according to the statutes and according to the ordinance of Almighty Yahweh. He said, and shout for joy. He says, shout for it. Lift up your voice as a shofar. If you want joy, shout for it. Hallelujah. Told ya. And he said, all you that are upright and left, is it not Yahweh that calls us to rock upright? All you that are upright and left. That's what he commands us, Yisrael. Be glad. Shout for joy. Shout because you are delivered. You are made free in Yahshua HaMashiach. All you that are Sadiq, that are, that are righteous. And we are righteous in him, Yisrael. No longer should we try to find righteousness in our own self because you're not going to find it. But if Yahshua, if his Torah abides in us and we abide in him, then we have his righteousness, Yisrael, in us. Matitiah, chapter 18, verse 18. And this some, somewhat preludes or brings us back to what I began this message with, Yisrael. How many times should we forgive? Does Yah put a number on that? Was that the reason why Yahshua spoke what he said? Hallelujah. It says in Matthew, Matthew chapter 18, verse 18. And this even concerns us being of like mind. One mind, one left, one heart, Yisrael. If we would be after the mind of Yahshua HaMashiach, then there will be nothing that we cannot overcome. The highest mountain. We can cross across, go across the most broadest of rivers, Yisrael. Nothing will be able to stop Yisrael. He says, truly I say to you, whatsoever shall be bound or you bind on this earth, it shall be bound even in the Shemayim. Do we believe that, Yisrael? Do we trust in it? And whatsoever you shall loose on the earth, it shall also be loose in the Shemayim. Again, I say up to you that if two of you, now this is key, that if two of you shall agree on this old lamb, we must agree, Israel. Yes. Yes. We cannot continue to fight, yes. disagree. Yes. We must be compliant under the Torah of Almighty Yah. If two of you shall agree on the Olam as touching anything, that shall ye ask, and it shall be done for them of my Abba, which is in the Shemayim. Hallelujah. But we must be of one mind, Yisrael. Not me going my way, what I think, and you going yours, but us going in his way, Yahweh's way. It says in verse 20, for where two or three are gathered together in my shame, in my name, there I am in the midst of them. Have we gathered in the name of Almighty Yahweh this day, Israel? Those of you that are listening by via live stream, 
that he is in the midst of us. His judgment is in the midst of us. His high seed is in the midst of us. His mercy is in the midst of us, Israel. It says in verse 21, as I move on, then came Kepha unto him and said, Master, Rabbi, Teacher, Yahshua HaMashiach, how often shall I, how often shall my ark, my brother, sin against me, and I forgive him? So don't you understand where this is going now? Kepha asked this question. Say, I know we must be in agreement. I know in order for us to work these great work and these miracles, that we may do what you have commanded us to do. I know we must be in agreement. But what if my ark offends me? What if we're not walking in compliance with, with Torah, with one of What should I do if my ark offend me? He says, how often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him then? Till seven times? Seven times. Not even ten times. Kepha, he cut a mighty short, didn't he, Israel? Yeah. Just seven times. And to shock him, to bring him to realization, Yahshua says to him, I say to you, not seven times, but until seven times seventy. Yeah. 490 times. Yeah. Did what he speak put a, put a number that you should stop? Because if that been a number, Yisrael, y'all, there'd be no redemption for us as a nation, as a household. Because Yah has been long-suffering with us through generation and generation. So it had to be more than just what he said. Hallelujah. It had to be more to that. That's why the dom of Yahshua HaMashiach is so important, Yisrael, y'all. That it cleanses us from coal, all of our iniquity. Because there are so many... That it cannot, a number cannot be put on. It cannot be kept, Israel. Yah. But the very dime of Yahshua HaMashiach has covered and has washed them all. Yes. Hallelujah. So should we be at our, with our, our, our hope? Not as long as we walk according to his statutes and his commandments. We will always agree. We'll always be able to go into battle and to conquer and to overcome anything, Israel. Yah. So Yahshua says this unto him, Therefore is the kingdom of the Shemayims like unto a certain king, which would take account of his servants. And when he had began to reckon, one was brought to him, which owed him 10,000 talents. We have heard this time after time, but I'm going to read this, Yisrael. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But for as much as he, but for as much as he had not to pay, his master commanded him to be sold, and his wife, and his children, and all that he had, and that payment may be made. What can we pay, Yisrael? If we didn't have the offering of Yahshua Hamashiach, what can we give unto Almighty Yahweh? The debt we have to pay unto him for what we have done. We could not pay Israel. The servant, therefore, he fell down, and he worshiped, he pleaded, he cried, saying, Master, have patience with me, and I will pay you all. Yes. Have we fell down before the throne, before the presence of Almighty Yahweh, and asked for Yahweh to be merciful, to have patience, to be long-suffering, Israel? He has been patient and long-suffering to us with. That even he given us the very breath that we had this morning. That we may enter into the bayat one more time. Why? To get it right. To make amends. To go back and to make our crooked path straight, Israel. Verse 27. Then the master of that servant, he was moved with compassion. His leg was moved. His heart was moved. He heard the plead and the cry. And he loosed him. And not only did he let him go, but he forgave him all of his debt. Yes. But you know, we have been forgiven, Yisrael, yes. of all of our debt. Of all of our iniquity and our sin. Not to go back, Yisrael. See, we continuously 
as a backslidden heifer. We go back again and again and again. And we expect just the mercy of Yahweh. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I repent. I'm sorry. And, and, and that's okay. And we do it again and again. When we come before the throne of Almighty Yahweh and we earnestly seek his face just as this man did. Yes. Sincerely. I don't believe he allowed the, his, his sins in this example or even the price, the debt that he owed, he didn't allow it to build up like that again. I guarantee you that. So why should we continuously go back into sin? Why should we continuously fall and stumble over the same thing time and time again? It must stop this right, Yah. Yah has, a, he has forgiven of us much, Israel, yeah. and just for that we should be thankful. We should not want to go back. We should not want to turn back to the weak and beggarly ways of sin and iniquity of the world and of the flesh. And his fellow servant fell down at his feet and besought him, saying, have patience with me. I will pay you all. And he would not, but went and cast him into prison yeah. till he should pay this debt. But he didn't have compassion on the next man. What he owed unto him. So when his fellow servants saw what he has done, they were very sorry and came and told their master all that was done. And when his master after that, he called him and said to, unto him, Oh, you wicked servant. Yahshua HaMashiach has forgiven us of much, Yisrael Yah. Yeah. Yet when it comes to, uh, uh, to the house of Yisrael Yah, we don't want to forgive. Even when the appropriate offering has been brought forth. This servant, he pleaded, he begged. He was sincere at the time. But yet he didn't remember the favor to return it unto his servant. To forgive him of all of his debts. So should we forgive one another, Israel? Yeah. Yes, we should. We fall. We miss the way. Yet we cannot walk under the spirit as one that resists. That when we are reproved, we fight. We cannot continuously be reproved and rebuked of the same thing that we harden our neck before Almighty Yahweh. He said, also, should not you also have compassion on your fellow servant? He said, even as I had pity on you. He said, so likewise. In verse 34. And his master was wroth and delivered him to the tormentors. Till he should pay all that was due unto him. He says in verse 35 after all this. So all likewise. Shall my Abba and the Shemayims also do unto you? Yes. Hasn't he done that unto us, Yisrael? Yes. Day by day he does that, Yisrael. Yes. Time after time he does that, Yisrael. Yes. He said, if from your left your hearts forgive not everyone his brother, yes. their trespasses. Yes, we should. But we must know who our, our, our whole yes. is. And we understand who they are, Yisrael. It's not that one that fights against the leadership that Almighty Yahweh has placed. It's not the heretic. It's not the one that cursed even the very Torah, the very law of the assembly, of the Torah of Yisrael. But it's that one that falls prostrate. It's that one whose heart is broken. He realizes what he has done. He taking time to examine his love and his heart. And he brings forth the appropriate offering before the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. As I bring this to a close today, Yisrael, I don't want to weary us in this teaching. Hallelujah. But in Tehillim 119, verse 59. 119, verse 59. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This is Yahweh's day, Israel. Yah. We should have come into his presence without 
Any kind of burdens into his house? Your praises, your offerings, it should be acceptable in his presence, Yisrael. Every time we come into his bayet. So even in this teaching, very in simplicity, we should understand and know what we should do and what we have to do. Hallelujah. To Helium 119, 159, it says, Consider how I have I love your precepts, Almighty Yahweh, and quicken me, O Yahweh, according to your steadfast loving kindness. He says that your word is truth from the beginning. Is it not true, Yisrael, Yah, from the beginning of all things? And even the creation is true. Even from the beginning. And every one of your righteous judgments, they endureth forever. He said, princes have perse persecuted me without cause, but my heart, my love, stands in awe of your word. He said, even though I'm persecuted, princes persecute me, there are those that are against me that rise up. I don't let my eyes be taken off of your word, Almighty Yah, your Torah. He says, I rejoice at your word as one that finds great spoil. Have we found a great spoil today, Yisrael Yah? Have we found great spoils in the Torah and the riches? It should make us shout with joy. It should make us, our, our countenance should be lifted, should be enlightened in the presence of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Why? Because we have found great spoils. He says in 163, he says, I hate and I abhor lying. But he says, but your Torah, your words of life, I do love. Seven times a day, I lift up my voice and hallelujah. Because of your judgments. You heard what he said, Yisrael? Yeah? He said because of your righteous judgments. There were many times, even in this instance, where he was not in the best place and in the best conference, Yisrael. Yeah? But yet, Dawi says, your judgments is righteous towards me. They are just towards me. Verse 165. And he says, Great Shalom, have they which Ahava your Torah, and nothing, and nothing, and nothing shall mikhol or shall offend them. It shouldn't offend us, Yisrael. The judgment, the Torah of Almighty Yahweh, it is just, it is true, and it's right. It should not be our stumbling block. It should not be a point of offense unto us, Yisrael. If we would do as he commands us, then nothing would offend us, Yisrael. Nothing would cause us to want to turn and go astray. He says nothing shall offend them. Hallelujah, way. Hallelujah. Turn with me to Yakahanan. Let me see here. I'm not going to complete this today. It's not over yet, Israel. This could be taught until Yahshua HaMashiach comes. It's a living word, Israel. It never grows old. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless you, Abba. Let me read this. I'm going to stop here. In 1 uh, Corinthians. Corinthia. Because I want to read this. We must stand strong, Israel, as being examples to one another. Because there are those that are not as strong as we are. Even as we teach, there are those that may be listening, those that are here amongst us. The Muna not, is not as strong. They have not experienced what we have experienced, have not experienced what you experienced. So we must walk in a way that we are examples unto them. That they will be strengthened to walk in Torah and not to walk in wickedness or transgress the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. And if we are how about one another as we should, then we will do such, Yisrael. 1 Corinthians 1, 1 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 1. 
It says here, now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we have knowledge. Do we have knowledge concerning those things? We have knowledge concerning those things, Israel. Right these wicked pagan practices, these what they call their holy, their holidays, these Christmases, these yeah, Thanksgivings. Yeah. I, I won't touch any, any, even when customers offer things, I don't take it. And if they try to sneak something into the vehicle, it gets burned. Yeah. Why? So my oxy, that example, they see the same thing. That they will follow in pursuit, Israel. Yeah. We touch things we shouldn't touch. We offer things that should not be offered. Yeah. Yeah. And don't you know there are those that watch? Yeah. If I would take, you know, I, I want to tell this. This is a short story, just something very short. Yeah. But even in the business, we had more art. We had more of those at work. And I was one because I, I made an oath that I would not eat from these restaurants. Yeah. I wanted to stand with my Ray in the same strength as he stood because he's an example to me. So I wanted to show the same thing. So there'd be times where the customer may go out, get pizza, bring Kentucky Fried Chicken. I, I, would, not, I would not partake of it. Yeah. I would eat my lunch. If I didn't have lunch, I would not eat that. Yeah. And that was one that would get angry at me. Because I would not do that. Yeah. Well, I'd rather do what Torah said. I'd rather work in, walk in the oak, yeah. what I have promised. Yeah. Even Dawid said it is better for one to walk in an oath or what he has promised and to obey that. Yes. One that wants to abide and abide it on the presence of Yah, even to his own hurt. Yeah. He has to follow it through. Yeah. So I would do that, and they would literally get offended at me for doing that. Well, it didn't bother me. But in the end, I was an example that stood. That even those that partook of that, they seen what I'd done. The next time, they didn't, didn't do it. Hallelujah. So that's what this is saying here. Now, as touching things offered unto idols or unclean things, we have knowledge. And knowledge puffs up. But love, it edifies. And if we think that... He knows anything. He knows nothing, yet as he ought to know. But if any man love Yahweh, the same is known of him. If we say we are Hava Yahweh, we love Almighty Yahweh, then the same is even known of Almighty Yah. He goes on in verse 4 and says, Even concerning, therefore, the eating of those things that are offered and sacrificed unto idols, we know that an idol is nothing. In the world. We know they have no power. We understand that what they offer unto them is it's, it's, it's nothing Israel. Right, we know that. But yet it is the very act of it. It is the heart that is put into it that makes the thing so wicked. It is against Yah, Israel. Right, so we know that the idol, it is nothing in the world. Verse 4. And there is none other but one, but Almighty Yahweh. We know that Yahweh, he is our Abba, he is the creator of all yeah. things. All these idols, they have no power, they mean nothing. But does that mean that we eat that which is said? Does that mean we eat the food of this Christmas and these pagan things because it doesn't mean anything? Is that what he is saying? That's not what he is saying, Israel. Yeah. But there are those that are weak that may not know or come into this understanding. They have to have an example. So he is expressing, even though we understand, we must be an example. We must stand, therefore. So he goes on and says in verse 5, For through their being called gods, there in the Shemayim or on the earth, there are gods many, and there are lords many. But to us there is one, yeah. Almighty Yah, our Abba, for whom are all things, and we are in him. And he is one. He is Ekad. One master, Yahshua HaMashiach. By whom are all things. And we are through him. And he says in verse 7. I want us to understand this, Israel. Yeah. How be it is that not every man have this knowledge? How be it is it that everyone don't understand that? Everyone doesn't know that. Everyone doesn't grasp that. For some with conscience of the idol. Yeah. To this thing eat, 
it as a thing offered unto an idol. Yeah. It says, and their conscience being weak, it is defiled. Yeah. Weak conscience, not able to resist, mm -hmm. but yet having a weak conscience, by that you're defiled. There's yeah. a defilement. You yeah. still have transgressed the Torah of Yah. But listen to what it says here. Verse 8, but meat commends us not unto Yah. For neither if we eat are we better, neither if we eat not are we worse. But he says here, but take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yourselves become a stumbling block. You continue to do it, it is not right. Because you are weak and you continue, it's a stumbling block unto you. You continue to fall and fall. Yes, yes. He says, the liberty, this liberty you take of yours is a stumbling block to them that are weak. But if any man see you which have knowledge, which have this understanding, that know the way of Almighty Yahweh, he said, if any man see you that have this knowledge, sit at meat with idols in this temple or sit at the banquet to eat or sit at their tables, or eat their meats or their dainties that have been offered unto these idols, shall not the conscience of him which is weak be even more emboldened to eat those things which are offered unto idols? If we that have this understanding that these things are against what Yahweh commands us, if we do them, which is an abomination, then those that are weak, they're going to even be more, more willing to do that which is not of Almighty Yah. So we must be the examples. Those of us that have the knowledge, we must walk according, and we must obey Israel. Yah. He said in verse 11, And through your knowledge shall the weak brother perish. You cause your ark to perish. You cause your hope to perish. Because you knew to do right, which was right, and you didn't do it. So are we accountable? Sure we're accountable. Did not Cain say, Am I my ox keeper? Sure we are, Yisrael Yah. So we must do that which is sadiq, which is right. He said, and through your knowledge shall the weak brother perish. For whom have Yahshua HaMashiach did give his very life for? Did not he give his life for all Yisrael? Yeah. Verse 12. But when you sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, you sin also against Yahshua HaMashiach. My last verse here, Yisrael, as I bring it so close. He said, wherefore, if me make my brother to be offended, sure. he said, I will eat no flesh right. while the world stands. Right. He says, least I make my brother to be offended or to walk contrary right. to the Torah of Almighty Yahweh. So how many times shall I forgive my, uh, yes. my hope? Yes. Yes. Just seven times? Seven times 70 years right, y'all. Yes. We must continually, but yet we must be an example. We must walk Sadiq, that those that are weak and they may fall, that we are able to restore them, and we're able to bring them back unto the place where they should be. Hallelujah. Is that not what Yahshua done for us, Israel? He made us acceptable before the throne of Almighty Yah. Hallelujah. See, many times we don't even understand what Yahweh well, he goes through. He's gone through so much, Israel. Yeah, we can't even comprehend that in the end of even all of this, that he will have a people that shall stand and shall walk in the light of his instruction and his path, Israel. Yeah. That everything that we do, everything we lay our hands to, Israel, yeah, it, it, should, it should be a blessing. It should multiply. It should be fruitful. It should grow. And it shall exceed Israel. Yeah. Hallelujah. Is it not what you want, Israel? Yeah. I want to be a strength unto my arm. I want to walk according to the statutes and the commandments of Almighty Yah. I don't want to be one that causes our arm to stumble or be a stumbling block. Hallelujah. Because Yahshua, he did not stumble one time at the promises of Almighty Yahweh. He did all that Yah commanded him. He pleased Almighty Yah and everything that he did, Israel. Yah. That he may be that offering that is acceptable without spot and without blemish for coal 
Yisrael. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. You know, he had us in mind, even though his life, his death, was for every man, and it was for the whole world. But it was also for the condemnation, that no one can charge Almighty Yahweh with anything. What can we charge Almighty Yahweh with, Yisrael? We can't charge him with anything. He has been just towards us. He's been more than what we would say fair. Yeah. Hallelujah. And I barack him for that. Yeah. Even for another day. Even though it's raining and it's gloomy outside, yet he's still wonderful. Hallelujah. He's still powerful. Yeah. And all things work according to his will. Even the rain outside. Yeah. Even according to his will. So let us be encouraged just right, y'all. Yeah. Let our countenance glow. Yes. Let your light shine. And do not hide it, Israel. Yes. Do not hide it. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. To stand before the wicked, yes. not casting his precious pearls, yes. but having those precious pearls in your lap, that you stand on Torah and you do what is right. Whether you're amongst Ark yes. or whether you are by yourself in the world, Israel, it is the same. The strength should be the same. Yes. Hallelujah. Yahweh Barak, Ko Yisrael, Yah, we do Barak you. We bow down to you for this day as you have stood and you have listened on this radio broadcast, this live stream, however you are listening on this beautiful Shabbat day. Yah has given his breath, he has given his life, he has given us his word. So let us walk according to his word and, his, and what he has revealed unto us, Yisrael, Yah. That we know how to enter in and to go out of the body of Almighty Yahweh. Hallelujah. Let us stand to our feet, Israel. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, the dumb of Yahshua HaMashiach washes even much wider than snow. Hallelujah. Abba Yahweh, we barack you for another day that you have made. We give you Torah, even for the rain, Abba Yahweh. He said, in all things, everything. Hallelujah. No matter how it may come or what it may be, we still yet, we give you Toda, Almighty Yahweh. Why? Because you are merciful unto us, Abba Yahweh. We do ask, Abba Yahweh, you would take those that have traveled even through the weather home safely. And that you would give even on this night, Abba Yahweh, the whole house of Yisrael, those that are scattered, tough rest. As we rest in Yahshua HaMashiach, that we have no worries. That we do not worry what is to come on tomorrow. Why? Because you will give us, Abba Yahweh, what we need, that we may endure and that we may stand. In all things we do, Barak you, in the precious and mighty name of Yahshua, Hamashiach, we do declare, Hallelujah! 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 Shabbat Shalom, Ko Yisrael, Yah Barak.